feel like an alcoholic. So we got to deal with listeners of this show. You get a taste, then you have to listen to 72 consecutive episodes. One by one, clockwork orange yourself. It is 1.53 p.m. Sunday, March 13th, 2022. Welcome to episode 72 of the fucking A podcast. My name is Willem Dafoe, and I'm joined by my man, Christoph Waltz. We both have names that you probably yes. all fuck up. You know, call me William, call him Christopher. Nah, put some respect I, on our names, I, boys. I, I, God, I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm energized by the fact that you just gave me, like, such a good name this episode. Yeah, dude, I was gonna call him. I was gonna call you Willem Dafoe, but I was. You don't want to be the Green Goblin. You'd much rather be like, in, like an Academy Award winner. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I think, I think you're more Willem Dafoe than I am. I, I, I take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of episode him. seventy-two. <laughs> I love Willem Dafoe. I'm not even up front. But anyway, yeah, man. All right, what's going on, Poppy? How you doing, Poppy? Uh, I'm good, Mama. I'm just hanging in. I'm, uh, uh, you know, navigating, <laughs> navigating life one day at a time. Post nut uh, clarity you. after the Super Bowl got you thinking. All right, it's a it's been a month. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. You know, it's been a month. That's true. So it's actually the one month anniversary. It was the thirteenth of February. So, you know, just that. commemorate your pain, my glory, eh. once more. Yeah, I have. I've had enough time. I'm good. It's true. That's true. We want to thank everybody for joining us for seven seventy two episodes. Means that we are now at three full days of podcasting recorded. 72 plus hours. You know, there's a little, there's a little like dingleberry of, of time at the end of every episode. If so you lost in the woods for a couple of days before you run out of food, you know what I mean? You have enough content. You'll be all right. You can, you can laugh your way <laughs> into a rescue. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> oh, God. They'll never <laughs> fuck. These guys are really not that great after 70 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate them. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining us for our, our comedy podcast here. Uh, you know, authentic, authentic homegrown content brought to you by Zoom, which for some reason doesn't Doo-doo-doo. like us today and kicks Matt out. Yeah, uh, fuck you know, I, I, I didn't ask. I'm sorry, I didn't reciprocate. How, how have you been? How has your last week been? What's, what's been on your mind? Been great, bro. I'm going fucking away finally. We got a trip planned, so I'm just... I, okay. Like, I'm like, all, all mental cells are devoted to that right now. I'm pumped, dude. We're going nice. to Jamaica in fucking April. Oh, a return. The prodigal return. son returns. <sighs> yeah, back to my homeland. Yeah, <laughs> I've been called uh, Jamaican guys. At work. No, sorry, the Trinidadian guys at work told me I was an honorary Jamaican. I said thank you, thank you. That's, I, I think, appreciate that. I think people say that to white guys just for fun. Absolutely. Also, it was Trinidadian guys that told me I was an honorary Jamaican specifically. So it's, it doesn't make any it sense. It doesn't really work either. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> like, you make sure you bring that up when you go there. By the way, I want you to tell all the locals that you meet. You know, hey. Yeah, I'm an honorary Jamaican. In my broken patois. Like, give, fucking, <laughs> give me your gold, white boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a great time. When are you, when are you going? Uh, the 10th. So it'll be a Sunday to Sunday. So we'll figure out either we'll do a double epi or we'll, we'll, we'll hash out we'll the details. Out. In private we don't here. want, we, you know, listeners come first, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah they don't need to know my details. They don't I was going to say, by the way, if you, uh, I'm going to tweet out your address so they can rob you that week plane number everything with a barcode so they can like go up and scan it themselves and steal the ticket <laughs> like, oh you're actually you. already on this plane what what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> oh hey i gotta ask you it's uh it's springtime in in toronto so so i read something this week that i i thought about and i mean it's true here too because it's london's also a moderately sized city but uh are you noticing the garbage glaciers around town apparently as they're referred to the the spring you know that ice that just won't melt yep. that's filled with shit yep. are, you, are you seeing a lot of the garbage oh, glaciers yeah. around town trust me uh i got stuck yesterday a bus pulled up in front of me at an odd spot as i was backing into like my parking spot at work and a bus was rolling by at the front and parked so that i couldn't fucking move because there was a shit glacier beside me <laughs> in where my spot should be and then the bus had like stopped and pulled over in front so i couldn't fucking readjust so yeah i've noticed those fucking shit glaciers also they're fucking disgusting it yeah. makes me realize how much garbage and oh shit God. is on the road that just kicks up by your car right so like the the effort being made by city workers who like literally just come through and make all of that disappear. Oh yeah, you dude. know. I catch them at like four in the morning and little like bobcats just like smashing, <laughs> smashing shit on the side of the highway. And those are the guys we got to be marketing the show to, right? They're just stuck in their little fucking things, driving around town with headphones in. That's what we, I should do. I should, we I should start stickering them. I should start stickering them when I'd like come by. Just early morning. Just knock on. Just like what? 
Like, have you listened to the fucking A podcast? <laughs> what? Do you like to laugh? Do you like to laugh? <laughs> you like Mormons? Yeah, Have exactly. you heard the good word? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, people in Toronto, watch out for the garbage. People in, I think, urban centers everywhere got to watch out for the garbage glaciers because it, it's a real thing. And it is disgusting. Cigarette butts. It's like, Ugh. it's like a microcosm of Ugh. like, uh, you know, the earth's history, like archeologists, except it happens on a tiny scale in every city. And instead of like mammoth tusks being found in melted glaciers, you just find 500 cigarette butts it's from so the past fucking, winter. I hate how I can like completely envision what you're talking about, yeah. dude. It's so fucking gross too. It's like dark gray ice. With surrounded by mud and a bunch of cigarette buttholes, like yeah, it's whatever's on the road that got kicked into it. Yeah, we should put like that a, on a stamp in this country. I feel like it's like a gelatin dish from hell. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like you can bring that to the potluck. You <laughs> brought the iceberg from outside. <laughs> Who wants a garbage glacier? <laughs> oh, God, yo, did you get fucked by daylight savings last night? Did I get fucked by it? Um, uh, only, only metaphorically. Yeah, dude, um, like we got in the Uber and I got home and next thing I know it was 3 30. Like, yeah. like, it doesn't make sense. What the fuck? I'm I'm thinking it was supposed to be tonight, and then I realized no, I'm I'm a fucking idiot. No, I Long mean if short. they dude, if it was a Sunday night into a Monday, the world would end. Yeah. Like that's true. That's true. It really would. Everybody would be calling in on Monday. Yo, I fucking hate day. Like, can we go back to 1900 like zero zero when we I don't didn't think have we this can shit do i don't th- i think it's one of those things where like the global coordination needed for it to to all end like there'd have to be like a 10 year like we're not ending we're ending it in a decade so everybody can prepare themselves and you know every every automated clock all your cell phones can be deprogrammed to i not, don't even that'd you know? be an easy switch because there's places in the world that like I think in like northern Canada, even in some spots, they don't actually use it because the the sun, the the timing of the sun is so much different, right? We use it because they sure. wanted to add, you know, an additional hour, like waking hours, so that you could have like less winter nighttime, essentially, right? It just, um, it just sucks. All nothing about shit. it is good. It's fucking shit. I no. hate it, dude. I I I could rant about this shit for hours. I think we should legit cancel that shit because I want to be a fucking lazy bastard and sleep in on my Sundays. I'm not trying to lose an hour of sleep and the positive from like getting the hour. I'm not like super pumped up. Like it's, it's fun for one night, but all right. Yeah. Pain of losing it. I was going to say, most people are like, Oh man, like they, they hate it in the spring, but in the fall, they're like, Oh, mm, that extra hour. Nah, it was wonderful. Like, I don't know. I Fuck agree. It's shit. fucking useless. It's and terrible. I mean, we're always more angry in the spring because, but you know, I feel like, I feel like we have more pressing issues on planet earth at the moment. We're just, you know, Although yeah, it would be nice to get something done that like everyone agrees with for once. This, this could be a distraction from the real problems, you know? It's just another oh. it's just another thing we can bitch about. We may have nuked the planet, but at least we fixed daylight savings along the way. Yeah, the, the if we nuked the planet, you're gonna fix daylight savings, all right? Be a fucking eternal right. nuclear <laughs> sun. Right. Just <sighs> How, you know, n- no clocks anymore. You know? Don't look, kids, you'll fucking go blind. Wee. <laughs> what a beautiful sight. <laughs> Uh, Drake is looking to unload his, unload his YOLO estate, TMZ reports. He has listed his Hidden Hills Mansion, a place that looks like a luxury resort. Champagne Poppy actually owns three homes right next to each other in an exclusive neighborhood, and they are all for sale. Is it Drake on hard times or something? Or is he, you know? Is he go- it's Toronto homes, right? No, that, that, these are no. these are Cali. These are his oh, California. So he's keeping his, he, oh, wow. Sorry, local. I Sorry, know, Drake. I know our listeners, dog. I know listeners in the in the GTA area were probably like, oh, you know, we're looking to maybe get in on that. Three homes all right next to each other in an exclusive neighborhood. They're all for sale. It's a totals for all three properties. A 6.7 acre compound at the end of a cul-de-sac. I mean, this is like you could hold out the zombie apocalypse here. You can have all three properties for a sweet $22.2 million package deal. You're going to buy all three, eh? Jesus Christ. Is that where well, we're at with homes? All three are for sale. So you can get all three or you can go them individually. The 12,500 square foot main home is being asked for $14.8 million. I mean, jump, change. It's pocket change. System, this is what we call an exciting investment opportunity here. Really? <laughs> The main residence is an English tutor. It comes with all the bells and whistles, six fireplaces, a wine cellar, a tasting room, and a theater that seats 25. 
six primary, fireplaces. Sorry six to cut you off, but six fire fireplaces. Places. How, bro? Like I, I, I listen. If I ever get mansion money, I'm good with one. I'm good with one fireplace. Okay. Oh. Oh, let's see. Let's see if you're good with the rest of it. I mean, first of all, a, a theater that seats 25. If I'm that rich, I'm not having 25 close friends. Not at all. I got like three or four tight homies. That's it. You know, I don't want that many people in my mansion. The primary bedroom suite fit for a king. That alone is nearly 2,000 square feet, and it features a partner spa with marble soaking tubs. 2,000 square feet, his bedroom. Dude, that's like my apartment plus your apartment plus another 500 square feet. Like, oh, it's my apartment times five. <laughs> yeah, like, there you go. <laughs> like, like, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to consider like, like it, to cross your bedroom is like something you have to think about. Like where'd I leave my, f- oh, it's on the dresser all the way over there. Like, uh, that's like a resort, bro. 1800 like, feet away. Fuck. You walk 10 minutes over to the kitchen. Like, let's make the trip. <laughs> that's not where they all ride segways around. Yeah, their dude, golf carts in their own homes. The property is decked out with a huge swimming pool, of course, a swim-up bar, 80-foot-long rock water slide, a spa grotto, and waterfalls. Not only that, there are also courts to play tennis, basketball, and beach volleyball, plus a horse stable and equestrian ring. And if you're scared of riding a real animal, Drizzy's got you covered because he's also got a mechanical bull. Bro. Mechanical bull? Jesus Christ. Yo, by the way, you know what he also has? What? Two more houses next door. Yeah, he like, owns, he owns like, the neighborhood. Like, 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 you trying to tell me you need this shit? Yo, Drizzy, bump and party, man. Aren't you worried about the neighbors? Yeah, well, I am the neighbors. Like, oh, shit. And Drizzy's home, baby. <clears throat> Do you think, like, when he throws a big party, he, like, puts the B-list guests or, like, oh, you have to party in that house. And then, like, the really unpopular people, like, you got to party in that house over there. Sorry. Hey, Drake, yeah, who's the, listen, listen, don't go. Kathy Griffin's over there right now. You don't, you, you do not want to go to house number three. <laughs> it's just her standing yeah, around. By like, Let me tell you about a few things right now. Like, whoa, sh-. she's just been yelling in an empty room for like 20 minutes. She's still, is she still around these days? I just, I remember she was um, in the news a while ago. Didn't she say some like, she got canceled because she did some like one woman show where she like decapitated a Donald Trump figure and people That's were like, what happened. <gasps> Atrocious. Yeah, it was He's like, uh, yeah, this guy's a devil. Let me cut his skull off on fucking stage. You're like, all right, that's a that's a little much, cat. I just don't understand abstract art. I mean, bro, I was also uh I was driving home a couple nights ago here and I kind of okay. had this thought. I was listening to some fucking Tupac, bro. I, I was throwing it back and I was enjoying I love, myself. When, I love when a white guy starts a sentence like this. I know, right? <laughs> but I thought to myself, I'm like, fuck, I'm getting old. And, uh-huh. you know, everybody in our age demographic talks about like, you know, like rap's not the same in this from the 90s. Now, all the white people in our age demographic. Yeah, anyway. of course. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I kind of had this thought, like, is 90s hip hop going to be like classic rock for our generation, for what it yes. was for our parents? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. It really is, eh? Like, it's like hair metal. It's like Guns and Roses, like GNR. Like, at least, yo, see, it'll be way easier to like fucking at least connect with the youth. Be like, yo. You know about Pog, you know about Biggie, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, old man, I fucking." Know I think about that there's shit. a difference though, like the way that the way that '90s hip hop has so drastically influenced culture, right? Like every, like even country music's trying to be hip hop now. Like, it, it, not like that. True. That was the like bedrock that you know 2000s hip hop, which was also like a highly underrated era oh, of hip hop, right before yeah. right before the genre really kind of started. Don't to try tank. to tell me Nelly wasn't popping. Yo, I was gonna say like the ant. That was the two thousands were like the the anthem decade. Yes, like yeah, just bangers, yeah. just like like locker room, like uh, uh, like good shit. Yeah, Max, Ludacris. I Nelly. always joke about this shit. I, I've been saying this to you for years. Like even when we're in college, I'm like, I'm like when we're old, like you know, like my dad was like, will like sing like a you know an eagle song. I'm like, all right, old man. Like, old man, you know? yeah, Jesus but Christ. It's, we're gonna be the ones dancing around. <laughs> Do it like drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. The kids are gonna be like, "Wow, Grandpa, Jesus!" Yeah, but that's so badass to me. Like an old man, like just breaking it down to drop it like it's We're hot. We're gonna be in, the like, coolest cap- old people. That's what I'm saying, bro. Old guys like just drop it like it's hot with fucking like shriveled up tattoos on their arms and just shit. Doing like the steering wheel, like. <laughs> 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 Taking out my dentures to eat my jello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get your little See, paper like, cups. That's what I'm your... saying, bro. Like, 
that's that's what I was thinking. I'm like, you know what? Like, as much as I make fun of old people, I'm gonna I am old people now, and I'm gonna be doing the same shit. But like, hopefully, it's it's already happening to us. Hopefully, our interests translate a little bit to like what's still relevant to be like. All right, you get a it, pass. It, You're it cool. Won't it'll I be the won't. same as every other gener- dude? I saw something the other day that was like. I was playing Madden actually. I'm playing Madden and like I Madden's music used to be kind of cloud. Now I just don't I just don't like any of it. Facts. But Facts. I was looking through the list and you're like, all right, Madden's very like pop culture now, which means most of its music is like mainstream dudes. And I'm just like, I have no idea who these people are. I have no I don't know how to tell people. I have no idea who Jack Harlow is. No fucking clue. Couldn't name a song. I all I know is he's some white dude with some white rapper dude. That's all I know. I, and I'm like, he's really popular. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm an old man who's not in touch with the new music already. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much, he's dominating the airwaves right now. Yeah, no idea who he is. Couldn't, couldn't even hum you a tune that's like, oh, I know he does that song. Like, nothing. Like, I could probably give you a Dua Lipa before I could give you a Jack Harlow. <laughs> it's the best I can do for you, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty popular, like, mainstream airwaves right now. Yeah. Some all right music. It's already yeah. happening. We're already here. He's the kind of guy that like I was like hating on at first, and then I like watched a bunch of his interviews and like listened to him like freestyling and shit. I was like, oh, you're like actually talented and you're a pretty cool guy. So I'll give you a pass on the on the whole like white guy dominating the rap space right now. I just like I just don't I just I'm unaware. Like this is okay. what like you know what young people don't realize is that when you get a little bit older and you start working jobs and you start living life and you like partner up and you like get into the routine of life, like when you're young, you're up on everything because you go to school and you're surrounded by people all the time who are just like you, who are up on the culture, who are share, Check talking this, and sharing shit that. all yeah. the time. And then you're older, you go to like an office and you're like, you work with a bunch of 45 year old moms who are just like, oh, I don't really do much, but work and raise the kids. Like, Have you heard the not- Eagles before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people who are like still listening to Guns N' Roses and you're like, oh, I know them. Yeah, I've, I, yeah, sure. Like, that's just it's just life, dog. Like you gotta, yeah, you, you can just, only stay up on the shit if you if you are active on your own accord. There was a guy when I went to see Jizza actually. Uh, there was a guy in the crowd, like by himself, nobody with him, was at least sixty years old and had his Wu Tang hat on, like kind of crooked. And I wanted to be like, yo, straighten your you. hat up, bro. But like that, I I saw myself in him, you and I'm like, your- fuck, <laughs> like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was having a good time at least. You know what? That's all that matters, man. That guy was right. probably like, I don't give a fuck what you people think. I'm here. Okay, I, got a, I, got a, I got a story for you. Okay. Slash topic of discussion now. Okay. Names obviously omitted for for uh, legal purposes. Sure. Legal purposes, let's say. All right. So I heard about a dude. This is like firsthand story. So this shit's wow. legit. But okay. guy at work shits his pants. <laughs> <laughs> because of his video game addiction is his is his excuse <laughs> so yeah you collect yourself over there my god for the record dan just spit his coffee out everywhere <laughs> every like my fucking laptop <laughs> these textbooks that i put my laptop on are now now coffee stained so any value they may have had gone all right so this guy works a job so a man in, shits his pants okay <laughs> in the public listen to this though He's so far gone that he has a code word with his manager for when he shits his pants and has to go home. And his, <laughs> oh, you know, you're I'm, just, I'm all right. No, no, I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just, I just already have very many questions. That's all. Okay. So his reasoning apparently is because of his quote unquote video game addiction. This guy's at the point where he has like a PS4 controller hooked up to his phone at work and completely Uh, ignores his job and just rocks the game so far that he doesn't even stop to go take a shit. My guy just keeps fucking playing at work, shitting his fucking pants and has to go home. How is this a thing, dog? How is this a thing? um, Well, there's a word uh, there. There's a reason that he's getting away with it that I won't say. But there's the, the, there's something about these the employment structure of your workplace. I mean, this man would be fired immediately under any other circumstance at any other job, but for medical he, exemption. No. Apparently. Like diagnosable, like I'm an I'm an addict. 
Wouldn't you uh, like if I was a heroin addict and I was at work and I was like, I can't do my work. I'm addicted to heroin today. They'd like send me to a treatment center at least. Yeah, at like, least put you to rehab. Be like, dog, you need to go to rehab for not shitting your pants for playing too many fucking video games, bro. I mean, w- w- like mobile games, like are these like he's like addicted to like the well, you know, like Candy Crush, like tapping the fucking button a hundred times. Like he apparently has like a literal like I used to have in college when I was fucking around with that giant note phone for the first time. He's got a PlayStation controller hooked up to his phone. And this wow. guy's just rocking, bro. At work though, and like I got no issue with you, like you know, killing some time at work. And if, but to the point that you don't do your job and you shit your fucking pants, like it's a problem. You know, I'm no, I'm no HR expert, but that seems like a performance review issue. Yeah, it seems me. like a cut and dry. Like you're, you're fired, yeah. but like I get might out need of to here. write you up a couple times here, dude. Like, he has a code word. He has a code word for like I gotta go home. Like yo, Black Betty. Black Betty <laughs> <laughs> calling it an audible on the fucking floor. What's here. uh what's your I shit my pants code word for this show? Like if, if we had to, you know, had to cut off the recording real quick because you, you know, you popped a turtle head or something. What's going on? <laughs> uh we'll go PD, his prairie dog. <laughs> PD, PD. Okay. That's my that's mine, I'd say. That is that's tough to process. A little bit. Dog, I was I was hearing this story and like I, I couldn't believe it. So at first the person didn't want to tell us the story and their partner looked at him and was like, Oh no, you gotta tell him. Like you gotta fucking tell this shit. Wait, did you hear it from the man himself? No, I heard it from people that are surrounded by the man okay, himself. I was gonna say, like I, I getting the story from the person would have been re- uh, quite a fucking experience. I'm oh, sure. there's no way someone tells you that just like off the cuff. And if they do, <laughs> like you need even more help. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just like shit my pants at work. It's no biggie, you know. I got co words for it and everything. Playing too much force on my phone to just, just, just gotta shit, gotta rip. But dude, like, you know, fuck. Think of, think of the, the negative versus the positive on this one. I love video games. I love playing games, but having to deal right, with coffee. The- there's coffee all over me. I just realized there's like coffee down on my chair still. Okay, look how <laughs> shitty it is. You got coffee all over yourself. Now imagine all that coffee was in your pants and it was fermented <laughs> garbage glacier shit. Holy fuck, man. Like how can you, how can you, you're right. How do you not get fired day one? I, I, don't, I don't know, doc. I don't know. Like you like, get, you get one. If you shit your pants at work, you get one opportunity to go to your manager and be like, listen, I got to go home. But the I second just, you're like, oh, I, what, what happened? Well, I just ignored my bodily functions because I was playing too many video games on the job. You'd be like, okay, like, how about go home, change your pants, and then don't come back ever. And then never come back again. Yeah. Like, you can Stay clean up the shit trail you left <laughs> on you like a fucking snail on your way out of here. <laughs> Call Matt. <sighs> He'll clean it up. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I got another guy here that's uh, in the neckbeard realm. Georgia man has been sentenced to 36 months in prison. So that's three years for all you counters out there that hate how people age their babies after using COVID-19 relief money to purchase a rare Charizard Pokemon card. Oh, fuck this guy. 31 year old Vinath Udusman was awarded an economic injury disaster loan for $85,000 after claiming to own a small business that supported 10 employees. These loans were created as a part of Congress's pandemic relief plan. I don't know if you guys remember that a little while ago. Try to help out the businesses. Oh, the pandemic. COVID. Yes, it rings a bell. Yes. Hmm, I kind of forgot hmm. about that. Yes. Now, once Udomensi got the money, however, the Department of Justice says he used 57789 of it to buy a Charizard card. A card matching the description, a first edition shadowless holographic Charizard card with a 9.5 gem mint rating was sold in the marketplace for that price late in December. U.S. District Court Judge Lee Brown Bowen also ordered Udusin to pay ten thousand dollars on top of the eighty-five grand in restitution and three years in prison. He'll have three years of supervised relief after the three years in prison, and he's also agreed to turn the card over to the prosecutors. I I mean, uh, I'm of the opinion that every person, not that they'll ever be able to investigate, but every person who's scammed for that shit should be fucking locked up. Like, oh, 100 percent. Fuck all y'all. Throw the book at these idiots. Like these like sports teams, like billion dollar sports teams who like filed for like relief benefits it's like go like fuck you people it's like people don't understand that the irs and like the canadian revenue agency exist like if you how are you gonna buy a fifty-seven thousand dollar pokemon card and not have it trail back to you 
Like, what is your plan? Doug, like the IRS and the CRA are like both like very, very understaffed and not very good at their jobs. Like anything you do, there's like, cra- so there's always a gamble that like you'll get away with it because they just, they don't, in, they cannot investigate everything and they don't investigate everything. It's more random auditing than like, anything like gotcha. they, this, the IRS is just like, if you get caught by the IRS, it's like you, your own fault, but it's also like, that's bad luck because man, they investigate like one in 50, like suspicious things. Cause there's no, there's nobody who does the job anymore. Like, ah, uh, that's what adulthood is, bro. Yeah. It's rolling it's the dice on evading that, your taxes. It's basically realizing that like these public enterprises and shit and these government facilities are just severely understaffed. <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. Why isn't this getting done? Well, that department over there literally has one employee now. So yeah. like government, like anybody who's ever worked a government job, like has seen into like what it's like to actually people are always like, oh, government employees are all overpaid and like everything's so easy. It's like some places, sure. But like, there's a lot of government jobs where like you were overworked because there's nobody else who wants to do this shit. And like, and that's exactly get, why you're overworked. Yeah. You're understaffed. Yeah. You just get buried and they're like, well, shut up. You get paid. Well, it's like, yeah, but like, this is terrible. I'm speaking, thinking about killing myself. <laughs> yeah, speaking from experience. Um, yeah. Are you okay, know. bud? You didn't think about ending it. Did you? I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm okay. Like a year later. Yeah. I'm that was rough, dude. You were, was, you were in a rough um, spot. I'm glad to have you back. I am. I am also glad to be back. So I was. I was using Reddit um, on my phone. I use. Uh, I use the uh, Reddit is fun. I think is the app I use. You still it's use that? App? There's a yeah. few of them. So, um, so you know, and I'll describe it for our listeners that like on on this Reddit app, what would be pages on the website are are like turned into like an endless stream, and the pages are just separated by like a page one, page two thing on the app, and in between pages there there are ads, right? There, it, you can easily miss them because they're stupid ads. And, but anyway, I was, you know, I was poop scrolling. And I noticed that the first ad said, said this. It said, this it just was a quote. It says, this will be a big help to the whole of Canada, end quote. I was like, uh, okay. And then right below it in smaller letters, it said, pro-world peace. Okay. Okay. And then there was a picture of Elon Musk laughing. And I was just like, there was something about the combination of these elements that to me, I was like, I have, I, I have to know. I got, I got to know what this is for. I got to know what this ad is. So I clicked, right? So it takes me to Forbes.com. Forbes, right? It's got the like Forbes header. And I'm like, Forbes. Not what I was expecting. Okay. Wow. Forbes. Holy shit. So it starts with this. It says, billionaire and Tesla founder Elon Musk has just invested more than $750 million for an innovative new company that will transform the future of finance for the world. Okay. Sounds like something okay. I do. Interesting. Today, yeah. Musk. Today, Musk confirmed a $750 million deal with software company Bitcoin X, which is dedicated to trading cryptocurrencies currencies with predictive artificial intelligence. Okay. It's a significant investment. $750 million. Oh, yeah. Right. And that now I'm scratching chunk. right away. Scratching my, scratch the top of my brain. Bitcoin X is a, is a cryptocurrency, first of all. It doesn't trade for very much. It's like $0.005 a, a, a coin or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, and I also searched a $750 million Elon Musk investment. Can't find any record of that in the actual news. So, but as the article goes on, unfortunately, Elon has landed in some hot water with the Royal Bank of Canada. As Bitcoin X is set to completely uproot the immense power that the banking industry has over Canada. Prominent economists have been predicting such a system from Musk after following this project that was years in the making. It's very wordy. It's very kind of indirect. The Canadian Minister of Finance, Christian Freeland, recently said, quote, this product is rumored to predict how the market will move. And if this is true, only a limited number of people will become massively wealthy with no risk involved, end quote. Our minister of finance said that? So I'm itching again. Never said that. That's not a quote. There's, there's no record of Christopher Freeland ever saying anything about Bitcoin. Any, it's, it's just not, literally not a thing that happened. You're on Forbes? <laughs> ever. So the article continues, according to company representative, quote, Bitcoin X has immense potential to change Canadians' livelihood and the way we build wealth forever. In our initial trials, everyone who tried Bitcoin X on the first beta testing is now a millionaire. Wow. And it's a glorious (laughs) victory. However, because of the massive power of the system, it can only support a limited number of users or the market would be saturated very quickly. What do you think this article actually was in the end? 
This is like a meme dump from some like propaganda shit to try to. Like, what do you it think sounds the bottom like of the it. article had on it after this this wordy quote filled? You know, the minister of finance a, said this. A huh? gif of like Elon Musk laughing. A link to sign up for something. And what do you think? What do you what do you think it required signees to do? Give your credit card number. Give your fucking with just a simple three hundred dollar investment. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! So now, so now I start going back to the article, and I'm realizing all the Ponzi scheme words in there, right? Everybody, it's there's only a limited number of spots. Act now, right? It's a call to action. You know, you, you got to get in because everyone who did it is a millionaire now, and it's going to change it. I said Elon Musk, so therefore now you're interested because like he's like that guy. He's like the dude yeah. from the internet with the rocket ships, right? Minister of Finance of this country never said that quote. And then I'm starting to think, how is this on Forbes.com, right? How is this on Forbes? So I, I, I go to the back to the article at the top where all the Forbes and there's all these like Forbes links. And I start clicking on them. Each one of them takes you to BitcoinX.com. And I'm like, it was all fake. It was all fake. It wasn't everything Forbes. about his fucking Forbes fake Forbes header. The whole thing was this like elaborate ruse to get people to sign up and give $300 to some scam. And it's just like, it's good and, stuff, bro. And guess what, bud? You're their demographic. You're their target audience. Like, how far? I mean, it smelled like bullshit. The ad smelled like bullshit. The article smelled like bullshit. I Googled one additional piece of information and was like, oh, this is all made up, basically. Yeah, the scary part is, though, people won't do that. Like, people will click on that shit. There's yeah. the, the problem is the fucking pond is so big these days that you yes. throw a hook in there, you're going to catch a fish. Like yeah. these things wouldn't exist if people didn't fucking fall for them, right? Like if you can convince someone to go buy iTunes gift cards to pay off their supposed fucking Canadian Revenue Agency fucking debt, like you can get them to pretty much click on anything. It's the season, by the way, for, for listeners. This is scam season because it's tax season. And, yeah. and tax season, I, I don't know if anybody else is or if you're experiencing this, but I've noticed the last couple of weeks I am getting an absolute wild influx in random numbers calling me and like voicemails in Mandarin, you know, you know, those like automated ones that yep. just are like clearly trying to entice like somebody who speaks Mandarin into signing a bunch of Amazon gift, gift cards over to them. <laughs> Tis the season. So public service announcement. Do yourself but, uh, a favor because I still use Reddit as fun. Pay the three bucks to upgrade. I haven't seen an ad on Reddit and fucking. I, but those are the only ads they have. And also, I don't. I, I only clicked it because I was like, I got to see what this is. I got to see what the pro world piece Elon Musk Bitcoin X thing is like. It's one of the only like apps I've ever actually paid for. Because I'm like, you know what? I use this so goddamn much. I don't want to see this shit anymore. It's three bucks or something. I rag on crypto shit all the time and NFTs. As and you I know should. You, As and I mean, you I know you do too. And a lot of people do. But like, uh, how many fucking scams are there? They're all scams, dog. It feels like, you know what I mean? And then it the ones that aren't like scams were scams. like, they were supposed to be scams, but they ended up working. Like uh, uh, just the amount of times you hear people getting the rug pulled on them and shit. Like, uh, let me, let me stress this. If you're going to buy a currency invented by a small YouTuber that you like, and you're surprised when you lose your money, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. Who bro. was the you're basketball a player? De'Aaron Fox, right? He was selling NFTs or something. And then mm -hmm. was like, I can't do it anymore. Like made off with a million dollars. Yeah. It was like, sorry guys, I bit off more than I can chew. So I'm going to take all the money out of it. Have a nice day. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to take all the money and you guys can go fuck yourself. By the way, I'm a millionaire. Yeah, he makes $30 I mean? million dollars a year playing basketball. And he was like, I'm just going to casually scam you all out of a million Oh, you're, you're my fan? Okay, give me your money and then go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, fuck. Listeners, fucking A's launching an NFT line. Buy them. Give us your money. Your fans. Us, you can want some fuck bucks, huh? Fuck bucks. <laughs> oh, what do you bet it already exists? Because we said crypto cocks and then that turned out to be a real thing. <sighs> I hate the internet. Shout out cock fam. Type out fuck bucks on Twitter and see what comes up. <laughs> I'll do it. Let's do it right now. I got Twitter right here. Fuck bucks. Let's just see what happens. Fuck bucks. Fuck bucks. Let's just search by people. Um, there's a there's a Twitter account called Fuck Bucks One Twitter page providing life events of the fuck bucks. This includes stories of fuck bucks. Oh, it's like a Starbucks bad Starbucks customers never went anywhere. Evidently, no followers, no tweets, nothing. 
Somebody had an idea and just fell apart. That's somebody that like buys up handles and tries to sell them. Yeah. Brooklyn man, Philip Vosto, 20 years old. He's an independent contractor and self-described experienced hiker was visiting Phoenix on business when he decided that he would attempt to summit Humphreys Peak in Flagstaff, Arizona. Using YouTube and the popular trail guide app, All Trails, Vosto conducted some research that suggested the summit of Humphreys Peak could be reached in two to three hours. However, most of his research pertained to trail conditions in milder seasons and did not accurately reflect the snowy conditions that Vasto oh, would encounter. Unequipped with a light source, when night began to fall, Vasto became increasingly concerned about his direction. Approximately 6.50 p.m., he calls 911 to report he was lost on the trail, and uh, he would try to navigate his way back. The Coconino County Sheriff's Office search and rescue unit was dispatched to respond to the incident. They warned him about the perils of poor planning and being unprepared to hike in these conditions and advised him, hey, you know, come back in some better weather. Try it again hey, later, brother. Hey, you should have jam-packed your, your iPod filled with 72 episodes of fucking A. To Absolutely. You are ready to be out here all night, buddy. <laughs> so they gave him a little, you know, stern talking to and, and sent him on his way. Accidents happen. Well, my guy did it again. Oh, the next man. Fucking, the next fucking day. Oh, man. On day two, a hiker discovered him with 5% of his phone battery remaining and poorly dressed for the weather, decided that this guy wasn't going to make it safely down. So he helped him call for the rescue for the second time in two days. Yeah, I'd be like, you're going to, we're going to put you in jail now. Sorry. Like, bro, hit this guy with all of the fucking feats because it's obviously not cheap to send out a rescue team like up a fucking mountain to get somebody. Hit this motherfucker with all the fees, bro. Like, you didn't even come back a month later with a better plan. You came back the next fucking day with the same shit you had in your suitcase. Bruh, like, I hate, I hate people. I hate people. I, I, I mean, the sheer lack of, like, brain power, you know, stubbornness. This guy, I mean, like. Stubbornness, that's the thing. What are, what are you trying to prove? Like, no, that he's a fucking man, yo. That he's, he's got <laughs> it together. This is a dude that, like, probably thinks he's been successful in business and successful in life, and he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Like, Oh, so it's like one of those dudes who freeze on the top of Everest being like, I've conquered the business world. I shall conquer the mountain. Like, yeah, except this guy couldn't even get up a fucking hill out in Arizona. This guy ain't getting up Everest. How are you going to go in the middle of wintertime and be like, oh, it's Arizona. It's hot. Like, dog, you're trying to climb a mountain. Like, it's going to be fucking cold. Like, yeah. real cold. So the well, dude like, apparently was, like, not even remotely dressed for the weather, had, like, no plan for anything. All right. I mean, I mean, look, look, the specifics of mountain climbing and being, like, first of all, how do you fuck that up in the age of Google where you could be, like, I'm climbing this mountain. What do I need to know? What do I need? People would be, like, you need this, 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 this. Go nuts. You'll be fine. Poorly dressed? You didn't open the weather app? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, everything of this just reeks of, like, stupid entitlement. I'm like, yeah, I'll be fucking fine. Like, sure, no, you them. won't, dude. Like, you clearly want to die on this hill. Literally die on <laughs> Literally this hill. Literally die on this hill. <laughs> Guess what? How would you like your wish to be granted? Oh, he got to get out of jail free card the day before for his own fucking ignorance. Yeah. Turns around and is like, I'm going to cash that in. I'm going to go up again. I'm going to try that one more time. Hey, bro, like, if, if you did this shit, dog, I would never let you hear the end of it. Ever. Ever. We couldn't even go outside to walk. What to if the I store. shit my pants at work from playing too many video games? I feel like this is worse. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, interesting. Nah, okay. I don't think Dude, so. no, it's not. I, nah, I say it out loud. No, nah, it's not worse. Shitting your pants because you have a video game addiction while you're at work is a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. When you put it like that, I mean, yeah. although climbing a mountain that you're vastly underprepared for twice in a row and having to call rescue services, which like either time you could have died, literally died and never been found again. Like, yeah, SMH, my head. This man, man needs real, help. Some people need to just be left. Like, you know what, dog? Nah. Like, you can you can stay up there for the night. If you're dead, yeah. you're dead. If you, this you know is what the I mean? destiny like, you chose, right? Like, second time, bro. Like, you know, I put you fucking try to like swat your dog's butt or something if they fucking bite or some shit. But you want to bite again, and the other dog's gonna bite you back. Like, yo, you deserve to get bit. Like. You gotta learn your lesson at some point. I can I get that written out on like a on like a, a motivational poster that I can hang on my wall, you know? It's Matt's wisdom. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start putting up like a weekly like great quote from you. I think oh, I had one in the in the previous uh in the warm up convos. You can dig back through the archives for that. There you go. I don't even remember what it was now. This is how, this is how foggy my brain is. Uh, me too, dog. I hate gonna put me on notice. Smoke weed. I should stop smoking weed. 
Yeah, but then you'd have to like deal with life all the time with sober clarity. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, don't want right? to do that. I'm trying to just um, float through. I have, um, I have, uh, I have people who are in need, people out there yearning for guidance. And when we, when we need guidance and, and we're lost, we call Dr. Matt. Live and in the flesh. How may I be of assistance? Dr. Matt, I have a few people who have some conundrums who could use your guidance. I'll start with this first one here. Three years ago, my wife died while we were in the process of separating. Her death was unexpected and left me with conflicting emotions. So I haven't dipped a toe back into the dating pool until now. Zoe is my first serious relationship since then. She's a single mom to a five-year-old boy. Dad is a deadbeat. I never thought I would enjoy kids, but I have really gotten attached to her son. After seven months together, we discussed them both moving in with me and even marriage. Zoe and I seem to be on the same page about everything until it came to my furniture. My late wife was an interior designer and basically did choose everything in our house. Most of it is very high end and expensive. Zoe now wants to get rid of everything. I have told Zoe I would be happy if she wanted to repaint the walls or choose new artwork or a new bedspread and pillows, but shelling out thousands of dollars for new furniture is nuts. Her stuff is all thrift store finds that have seen better days, and her son sleeps on a camping bed. If we need to spend money, it needs to be on a new room for him. But Zoe insists I cannot, I, I can afford it, and if I love her, I will do this so that there are, quote, no ghosts left in the house. I pointed out that I don't have any pictures of my late wife up, save for a few group family reunion photos. Zoe has several fam- framed pictures of her with her ex and their son as a baby. Zoe tells me that isn't the same. It is for her son, and she says that she was bitterly over her ex before their son was born. Zoe said, I can't say this. I can't say the same. If my wife had lived, would we have gotten back together? I threw my hands up and told her unless she knew a medium with a counseling degree, that point was moot. <laughs> my wife died. Maybe we would have gotten a divorce. Maybe counseling would have worked, but speculation is pointless. Is this gentleman wrong for being upset that his new wife doesn't want the dead wife's furniture in the house? Not even, fu- yo, fuck this bitch. Listen, it's, un- it's, it's actually a pretty like understandable position to be like, hey, there's some shit around here that reminds you of your previous marriage and like, I don't like it. That includes things like photos. Weird fucking Which shit. Which he said like he doesn't have. Exactly. Exactly. So my guy, yo, nah, your furniture? Uh-uh. And it's nice shit? Get the fuck out of here, man. No ghosts. I don't want any ghosts. I've heard I've heard this before, though. Like, this isn't the first, you know, like, case of this I've heard. And I... I dog, like, you sleep, your kid's sleeping on a camping bed and my guy's got some fucking banger furniture? Isn't that part of the reason you're with him? You're like, fuck yeah. Like, this shit's an upgrade. Got a nice house. You know but what I mean? Like, as you can see, her next thing is, you know, you can afford it. You can buy us new nice shit kind of thing, right? Go. You so, picked up on that little subtext yeah. right there, eh? So that's, if you that's love a little bit me, a, you can afford it. No. Nah, it's a red flag, dog. I feel red really flag good. indeed. Dude, you're if you're flaying that, like waving that shit right in my face of like, you can afford it if you love me. No, that is like a that is like a get out line. That is get the fuck like. You just showed me exactly who you are. Isn't that a little bit like, I mean, my man here has got a pretty good point, right? The kid's sleeping on a camping bed and you want new furniture. So instead of like, yo, let's get, let's get your boy like some good shit. Give him a nice room, a real bed. You're like, no, nah, throw all this nice furniture away and get new shit. I don't want your dead wife's shit around here. You said like the house is like, they've changed the paint and shit too. Did, did uh, he you said, say he was like, he was like, I, he said that he would he'd be like, we can redecorate the art and the painting, but like the furniture see, is a bit much. See, that's like a completely fucking understandable position too, where it's like, I'll even give up changing some of the shit here to make you feel more comfortable. Like that sounds if that's, like a compromise, right? Exactly. Like, like a healthy adult compromise. And the other side's met with, if you love me, you'll do it. <laughs> you'll buy all this. You'll shit. buy all this shit. Fuck out of here, man. Yo, woman, woman is the asshole in this situation. I like. Oh, there you go. You spinning the am I the who's the asshole angle on us? Definitely the asshole here. No, that's like I and I, if she didn't have the whole like throw everything out, you know, like I think it's a kind of valid concern to be like, hey, there's some shit that reminds me of your previous relationship. Can we change some stuff? Okay, yeah. for sure. 
I think that's fair. I really do. But throw all your furniture out is fucking just ridiculous. You're not the type of person that I want to like hitch my trailer to for the rest of my life. It does seem like an unreasonable, like you're creating an economic burden. Like even says like, I don't have that much. Like it's that that's an expensive ask. Like, you know, that's a major economic decision. Ridiculous. All for, all for no ghosts. I Where's your no furniture? Ghosts. Camping bed, bitch. Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you sleep on your son's bed because your shit's going to get repossessed. If you're the girl, can you just like start up in it like in the middle of the night just being like, I keep seeing ghosts. It's the furniture. Your, your wife, your dead wife lives in the furniture. I still see her in here. What was that? What was that? What was that? What was that sound? <laughs> She's still here. John's a premature ejaculator. <laughs> oh, oh spilling secrets and shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's why we were separated. Fuck. Uh, I've already been through this once. All right. Dr. Matt. My husband, in, in brackets, by the way, my husband, Matt. Oh, okay. What's, I mean, what's my wife? What's she going to say? Your wife, your wife has some issues here. My husband, Matt, is the kind of person who will make a story more dramatic with every retelling. This is about Uh, you. I hate these. No, it's not. This guy didn't shit his pants at work. He literally just had like a small accident. You're just dramatizing it for a fact. I heard it from his manager, okay? (laughs) (laughs) These stories can stray pretty far from reality, but he seems to believe what he's saying. This isn't my favorite thing about Matt, but not worth divorcing over either, okay? I stopped correcting him in public years ago because it always gets very awkward. But recently he told one of my colleagues a dramatic story about me going into early labor the night before I was supposed to defend my dissertation. I did have a premature baby while working on my PhD, but our son was actually four months old when I defended my dissertation. I'm so in the habit of not correcting Matt that I just ran with it. But later my colleague repeated this false story to another person. This isn't a lie that I would jeopardize. This isn't a lie that would jeopardize my job if it came out, but I'm just not comfortable having it floating around amongst my colleagues either. This experience has made me realize that I need to have some better strategy than just smiling and nodding when Matt tells some overblown story about our life. I feel you, honey. That's how I feel around here too. <laughs> Any suggestions for how I can do that without looking like a naggy wife from a sitcom? Excuse me? You're worried about looking like a naggy wife? I look like, shut the fuck up. That didn't happen. Like, what are you talking about? He's going to spit out some bullshit lies out to my co- fucking coworkers about how I did some heroic shit when it didn't even happen? <laughs> Come on, dog. Check yourself. This is what happens when you don't correct those little fucking white lies around the house of like, oh, before I washed the dishes, I ate the fucking Matt's sponge because I was so hungry. Yeah, Matt's and I just out of control, regurgitated though. it and cleaned everything. <laughs> like, yo, people like this, people like this need to be nipped in the bud. Because that's what you've allowed. You've allowed a bullshit flower to grow, and now you're fucking reaping the rewards of this dog shit fertilizer. Fuck out of here. There's another Get one. You- I'm, I'm framing that, too, by the way. Check your mans, yo. Check your mans. I mean, yeah. how, I mean, what other stories does this guy tell? I, like, I wish I could talk to this one and be like, what are some other exaggerations that this man has come up with over the years? Just like at the like, casual dinner parties? Like, oh, yeah, I climbed a whole fucking mountain. Like... I was Two on days in a row. Two days Never in even a row. needed to get rescued. I just, I was, I don't need to plan. Just walked out there and fucking conquered that shit. I'm a beast. <laughs> I'm thinking of buying Drake's triple house mansion in, uh, in California. You know, I was looking into the real estate. Looks pretty good. It's a solid investment. Like, honey, uh, honey shut the fuck up, please. I, re- I really think Patrick Bateman is the epitome of what it means to be a man in the 1980s, you know, business culture in New York. I really identify with him and his struggle. It's- it's just like that. Just like, I, I mean, I killed, I killed like eight people on a cocaine binge in the eighties. It's crazy. Like all the time. Or did I, <laughs> I woke up. I didn't even fucking know what happened. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, how bad you feel for this woman, right? Like, how do I, how do I address it without looking like a naggy wife? Like, I don't know. Tell him to shut the fuck up. That's what like, I'm saying. Like, you don't need to be, con- no, don't nag about it, but just immediately address that shit. That says right off the hop. Like, no, 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 this, that, that didn't happen. I can't fly. Like, but you can't can fly. Bet. You can bet that, like, this is what I mean, though. She's like, it was so awkward to address it years years ago that now I just let it slide. So it's like, so not only does he make shit up, you can tell. He makes shit up and then probably, like, strongly stands by it, too. 
You know? Well, he's probably one of those people that like, yo, if you lie enough and shit, like you can honestly convince your own brain that those things happened. Like you yeah. can, oh, yeah. you can misremember shit. And then if you double down and start telling it, like you just have a complete different memory it's formed like, of what actually happened. It's like, it's like influencer culture and shit where like, you gotta, you gotta pretend and act and stuff so much that eventually that's just who you are. Yeah. You like, become you're not that. pretending anymore. You, you are actually this person now, like congratulate. You, well, you did it. I've listened to a few like influencer, like kind of just sit down and like talk to the camera and be candid for a second about Mm -hmm. that. And that seems to be the common thing is like, I chose this life. So like, I understand what it is and it pays me well and yada, yada, but you you guys need to understand, like I'm on 24 seven and it's fucking draining. Like, man, that sucks. If you fake parts of yourself so often, then you're not faking anymore. Like if you are something all the time, then you are that you can't just be like, Oh, it's just an app. Absolutely. Like, it's just an act. I'm like, but if your act is your whole life, then, then when you're not acting is the act, you know, that's you pretending to not be the person you're pretending to be all the time. You, you flip the script on yourself. Facts, which is like my worst nightmare, my worst nightmare, dude. I, I can't imagine like lying so much that you just become like ingrained and embedded into it. That's why we only do an hour a week. I mean, if we did a show a day, bro, we'd be like, uh, misinformation left, right, and center. <laughs> You'd just be walking around, <laughs> meeting people, telling wildly exaggerated stories. And your girlfriend Haley would be sitting there, be like, oh, "He always does that." Are you I sure this co- wasn't her who wrote? <laughs> <laughs> I need content. Content. <laughs> Start submitting things about me, please. That's a tough scene. We here, you know, on this podcast, so we don't we don't exaggerate. So we're more we're try more not to. All right, I got one more for it. you. All right, bro. Hit me. One more, one more prescription from Dr. Matt. So I am a 45 year old divorced woman who goes by a very common nickname to my more formal name. Think Jenny, Jennifer, Mandy, Amanda, that kind of stuff. Well, I know some people use both their formal names and nicknames. I really don't. Indeed, my closest friend from childhood goes by Jennifer. And so I really don't think about it as my name at all. I'm dating a terrific guy who for some reason insists on calling me Jennifer. I have asked why and pointed out that I don't call myself Jennifer, but it seems to be sticking. Indeed, when we went out for dinner with friends last night for the first time, he introduced me as Jennifer. That's not my name. I don't want to be called that. Oh, sure thing, Jennifer. Whatever you say. Hey, guys, this is Jennifer. It's not what I go by. Like, no, no, she's great. Like, what's wrong with people not being able to listen to basic communication shit, dog? Like, yo, this is also a woman. I don't know, Matthew. I can't really understand. You know? <laughs> but this is also a woman you're trying to court and like have a relationship with. This is the one person that you should be doubling down and being like, oh, you don't like that? Got yeah. you. Hondo You're in the early phase. You think he'd be, he'd be people, please. He's not even making up wild stories yet. Like, he's just. Like, this sounds like some coworker shit. Like, some coworker you hate kind of bullshit. Be like, I keep yeah. fucking telling that guy not to call me Jennifer. And he keeps fucking calling me Jennifer. Oh, whatever, Rachel. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, have you met Bill? Uh, my name's Steve. Ah, sure thing, Bill. Whatever you say. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, like, how do you, how do, you do that to somebody? Like, and just, like, blatantly be like, that's, you know. This is Jennifer. Oh, uh, I'm Jenny. Sure thing, Jennifer. We're, <laughs> That's, this, we're together. So, bro, that literally is a quote from fucking uh, from, um, American Psycho with Patrick Bateman. There's actually a scene where the girl like the girl does that. My name is this. He's like, okay, Trudy, or whatever. Just like, calls her whatever he wants, dude. That's what yeah. I'm saying. These people, like, I am the main character motherfuckers that exist around us and just fucking crawl around and just act and just do whatever the refuse, fuck they want. Refuse, refuse to, like, to, like, adhere to the basics that's what i'm saying this is basic Ab- shit dog absolute fucking basics of anything like my name is not this please call me by the name that i go by like no elon <laughs> musk kids in like 20 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what do they go by like uh my name I, I go by jenny it's Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer 12 ab3 uh it's, it's just jenny please whatever you say Whatever you say, Xenifer. <laughs> <laughs> but he's changing the world for all of Canada. You get in now, three hundred dollars up front, you'll be a billionaire. I, I, I hate we, the internet. Why is it every time we? 
I feel like advice columns are, are fully supported by absolutely god awful heterosexual relationships. Like, it feels like it. Feels like shit that it's like you already know the answer to, and you're just like asking for people to like you know back you up and be like, I'm not crazy, right? Be like, no, you're not. Like, why you even need to post on a forum about this? I have not. Look, I've never claimed to be the most wonderful man in the world at all. I know I'm not. I, I know I am. I am a flawed individual who has as many flaws in 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 an interpersonal romance as any person does. That you know, I I work on and I aim to improve as my life continues. But I could never in my fucking life imagine just like being in a relationship with a person and just couldn't, calling them by a name that isn't their name. Like, <laughs> so what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, these are just like, these are the real red flags. These are the snippets into like how a person's character is, you know? Like, it's one thing yeah. if it's like, oh, he, he forgot to put a dish in the sink last night. And like, I brought it up to him and like later yeah. he forgot again. But he started doing it every once in a while. Like, okay, you made a mistake. It's small shit work on it you don't even have the fucking balls to be like oh my apologies sorry it's not jennifer she prefers yeah. jenny like the second you would say the word you would realize Just that you fucked up doing it so i'm saying like doing it i've called someone the wrong name before because we got a person i work with that sure. her name is actually karen and she's like she goes by her middle name now because it's been such a seriously oh. i swear oh. to god dude so she's like please Please call me a man. Has gone so far as at work as like trying to like change your name there. Yeah. Like wow. legit going hard for like it. Like right? get the employee record thing changed to be the exactly. Man. So like I've called her Karen before after and been like, oh, sorry, man. Sorry. And she's totally yeah. cool with it because it's sure. you have that human element of like you've we've had this fucking discussion. Yeah. My bad. It's a small error. You're you also a human it. who's like, uh, that's me. I'm an idiot. Like, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just stupid. I am trying. Like you are like. You were verbalizing that, like, I actually do care. I, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just dumb. Like, yeah. <laughs> and this guy, no, let me double down and introduce my friends as Jennifer and, and then say nothing about it. Like in a Yo, group this- of friends, like, this is, uh, this is Jennifer. And let me tell you about the time that me and Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal in, in 2003 in L.A. played a game of pickup and I dropped 28 points and six times. It was fucking so cool. And Drake's Damn. private gym. Yeah, when he was, he's have. like, but Drake was like 12 when those guys were playing. Oh, well, yeah, uh, you, know, you know, he was on Degrassi. He was like, you know, he's having a good time. Like, <laughs> yeah, that wheelchair Jimmy money. Shut up, Jennifer. Stop correcting me. <laughs> like, oh, I feel like all these people are like one person. You know, yeah, just, <laughs> it's the same guy dating different women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every time, every time it's just like, how do people make, people make such absurd decisions in, in, and just like, and just get away with it all the time. Yeah. Like, kind of like, uh, well, actually I guess he didn't get away with it. Jesse Smollett, man. He fought, he got convicted. My guy's been oh, sent to prison, dude. I heard he flipped it back again to being like, no, it was real. And I tried, he like tried to like, he doubled down, bro. They brought up the evidence in court and the guy tried to like double down. So the judge made a fool of him in the court case. So I actually got a little, little here. We'll end it off with this. Right. Actor Jesse Smollett has been sentenced to 150 days in jail in connection to a staged hate crime that occurred in Chicago back in 2019. If you guys all don't remember this, he basically set it up as he was like assaulted and robbed. He said because- he was, he said he was buying a sub at like three in the morning or something. And when he was leaving the subway, he got jumped by, two mega hat wearing racists who put a noose around his neck and all this stuff. And what was it? It turned out to be like a couple of like Nigerian dudes that he like paid to do yeah, it. Or hired. Something like that. They were hired hundred percent. He wanted to use it as like a, to put himself into the news to help launch his acting career essentially. Was or he his, was in a contract negotiation because he was on what's it called power. I think it is the show he was sounds on. Sounds right. Somebody yeah, said sounds- that he was trying to like, he was trying to like boost his rep for like a bigger contract or something like that. But I anyway, just wanted yeah. to get his name out there and, and, and fake the hate crime and, and right. financed it. Now, Smollett will begin his sentence immediately. He was also ordered to pay more than $120,000 in restitution to the city of Chicago and was fined $25,000. So the reason for the, the order to pay the restitution is because it was an extremely lengthy police investigation that obviously, yeah. since he wasted everybody's time and money because he's just a fucking asshole, yeah. the judge decided, no, it's you're like actually going to this guy in the hills, dog. This guy should be paying for the rescue helicopter. 100%. You know? Fuck these clowns. <laughs> so he was sentenced to 30 months uh, of felony probation as well as his 150 days in jail. Now, Smollett oh. was convicted of lying to a police about the stage attack, which he hired two brothers to help him undertake near his uh, Streetville apartment. Judge James Lynn issued his ruling on Thursday 
saying the incident, quote, the extreme premeditation was an aggravating factor in the case. He also said that he believes Smollett orchestrated the attack to an exacting degree, rehearsing it extensively. Quote, you rehearsing? turned your life upside down. You destroyed your life as you know it. There is nothing that I can do to you today that will come close to the damage that you've done to your own life. Judge oh. also said that Smollett craved attention and that he faked the crime to, quote, make yourself more famous. Bam. Motherfucker just got slapped, bro. Isn't that what we're all about? We're all, we're all just craving the attention to be more famous, aren't we? Are, are you craving it to the tune of $145,000 and fucking ruining your life? I don't think wait, so. Wait, I, I have to imagine, like, what do you, like, rent out a studio to be, like, practice the choreography? Can like, <laughs> you imagine practicing this shit, dog? All right, let's go back to the top uh, places, everybody. We're going to run it through one more time. So I'm coming out with my footlong sub, okay? You know, you're going to come up behind me, like, like get the rope out, you know, like do all that. Like, <sighs> how, do I, how do I tie a noose? Okay, let's practice. Come on, this, this is more. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Look, we were talking before the show, and this is what I'm saying. Like, you see that this, with this, this is, this is a planet bullshit. We live, this is not planet Earth. This is nothing. This planet is filled with nothing but people who are lying fucking idiots all the time. Husbands in relationships, making up stories. Celebrities trying to get famous. Every everybody's just is just endless lies. All it is is lies. I hate it here. I fucking hate it here. The, <laughs> <laughs> like, fu- here's the thing: none of us would probably even know who Jesse Smollett is, other than the select few who probably watch Power or whatever show he had been on prior, sure. right? Yeah. Now this guy's a household name of just being a dog shit piece of garbage. Like, you're never gonna get work again when you come out, and if you do, it'll be some anti culture bullshit. Where like, oh, you know, because people are gonna, gonna be watch like, it. Uh, Fox streaming, ser- Fox News streaming service, like <laughs> Patriot TV. Like, <laughs> I just meant like people will tune in because they're like, oh, it's this fucking idiot, and they'll watch it to like make fun of you, kind of thing, right? Like, you just you signed your death warrant career wise. You know, do like a Barbara Walters like 2020 like sit down interview once he's served his time. Like, what were you thinking? Write a book. Like, oh, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Like part of it's changed. Yeah, exactly. When something bad happens, like you have to then like use use the bullshit you've done to like springboard you back into a new category. You better you know fucking I mean? you better find God while he's in prison, you know? Like he's oh, gonna need that for his redemption arc. Oh, yeah. for sure. You should become a past like a like a mega church TV pastor. You know, and actually I watched a documentary about that. Did you see that one too by any chance on Netflix? No, which one? Uh fraudster. <laughs> Uh, committed a shitload of fraud, like financial fraud stuff, went to jail, became a pastor, came out, preached, used that as his platform um, to like <laughs> show nice. people what's up and then scam them afterwards. Hey, yeah, <laughs> some of us just got a skill set. Some of us got a skill set for making up stories. Some of us got a skill set for scamming people. And Fuck, some of man. us have a skill set for comedy podcasting. My name is Dan. My platonic podcast partner and man who makes up stories across the screen is Matt. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> this is the fucking A comedy podcast, uh, organic, homegrown comedy content every week, every Friday for your eardrums, all games, no practice. Thank you very much for joining us as we complete our third full day of podcasting. 70 That's kind of cool. That's episodes. a cool benchmark. Just wait till we hit like a week, a month. That'll be know, concerning. A whole month, like a thousand episodes. We're going to get there one week at a time, one show at a time. One show at a time, baby. Thank you again for listening. Please tell a friend if you, you know, if you've enjoyed the show, show them where to find it, show them where to subscribe and, uh, and you know, share in the laughs. We're all about sharing the love around here and, uh, you know, spread, spread the gospel of, of fucking A. That's all we ask. We don't ask for any money. We're, we're, we're still sort of delaying, yet. scamming you with <laughs> NFTs. Yeah. Exactly. Not yet. All we ask is for you to spread the word, um, spread the good word. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use to listen. And uh, if you're fans of our yammering and uh, the small bits that we post every now and then on social media, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at fucking a podcast, F U C K I N E H podcast. Email us. If you have any stories, if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, if you need advice from Dr. Matt, please anonymously send your troubles to us. F N eh podcast at gmail.com is where you can find us there every week uh, with every episode. Now there are show notes that will have a collection of links to the stories that we've talked about. If you want to read more, if you want to imagine, if you want to verify that Matt didn't make up all this shit, the whole episode, you can find the show notes at uh, it's on the website, disinformed.ca 
slash fucking a all your show notes will be right there and also the show is on youtube now so if that's you know your preferred mode of letting us play in the background find us there subscribe there follow along and last but not least the fucking a beats spotify playlist all the music from the intro and outros of the show are conglomerated into a neat little package uh you can find the link to that on our social media accounts and uh you know if you if you like our vibes vibe with us you know what i mean last last thing really quickly too yep. uh more pandering here okay please rate and review on Spotify and iTunes. It actually does make a huge fucking difference. I used to laugh when I heard podcasters talking about that shit at the end of episodes, but That's it really true. does make a difference. So please just take the two seconds to click, you know, five stars, hundred percent. I'm not telling you to rate me badly. I'm telling you to rate me well. You know what? You know what? Let's be authentic. It Give us an honest fucking rating. I don't care. Yeah. Because yeah. actually, you know, yeah. it's true. You know, it's true. Ratings and reviews do and don't matter. They do matter only in the sheer volume. They don't matter in the overall rating. So people who are like hardcore about must give must got to give us five stars. It doesn't matter. If you think this is a three-star podcast, fucking tell us it's a three-star podcast. Tell us why it's a three-star podcast. Allow us to fucking grow and improve and build ourselves up. And we're also and then not we'll that delete your comment after. And then <laughs> <laughs> and I will email <laughs> iTunes and be like, this needs to be taken down immediately. Uh, yeah, be, be genuine about your opinions. You know, we're 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 not we're not gonna fake it till we make it around here. You know what I mean? It's just, this is Some of us tip. aren't. Matt, words of Zen. Words of Zen. Don't shit your pants at work. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> to to the point that you have a code word that you need to tell your boss that so you need to go home. Oh yeah, share us if you, if you tag us on social media. Share the share your I shit my pants code word, whatever you have, whatever you use, <laughs> and uh, we we want to <laughs> we want to know. Come back for episode number seventy three. We will see you next Friday. Till then, take it easy, folks. Be well, be safe, be happy. Say bye, Matt. Deuce, deuce, and the bubble goose. Stop lying, Matthew. God damn it! Stop. I carry two pieces in each holster. <laughs>